Hey there, my name's Daphne. I'm a 30-year-old woman who owns and runs a luxurious beach resort in my state. Now, of course, since I'm the owner, I do have a lot more leeway regarding where I can work, and I choose to work from home. Now, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law did not take kindly to that. What followed was months of bullying and getting belittled, but I put them in their place in the best possible way. Let me get started with my story. I grew up in a very business-oriented family. We worked with a variety of industries, but our most profitable business was the hotel and resort industry. I grew up learning about how our business worked. When I turned 16, I began interning at our beachside resort. This resort became my life. I fell in love with it. Greeting clients and managing the accounts became something I looked forward to every day. My parents were beyond happy that I had taken such a keen interest in the family business. So for my 21st birthday, my parents surprised me with something really big. Sweetie, your dad and I have been discussing something really big for last year. Yeah, and we think that you've shown us more than enough potential to do it. What are you guys talking about? Here, these are for you. What is this? We're transferring the ownership of the beachside resort to you. Are you serious? Yes, sweetie, we believe that you deserve it. I mean, this one's been working on it since she turned 16. I don't think there's anyone else worthy of owning it. I can't believe it. Oh my God. I promise I won't let you regret this decision. Oh, we know you won't. You love that place way too much to ever let it go down in flames. I cannot even begin to describe how happy I was when I held the transfer paper on that birthday. Needless to say, I poured my heart and soul into the business. In about a year, business was booming. I had made so much income that I was pretty much settled for life. Of course, that was only possible because of my parents, but I was still really proud of myself. I happened to meet my husband, Brett, through a dating app. It had been about five years since I got ownership of the resort. I was thriving financially, but my romantic life was practically tragic. The loneliness began to eat away at me, which was why I signed up for the dating app. Anyway, we ended up matching and then planning on a date. Let me tell you, Brett's profile did not do him any justice because in person, he was 10 times more handsome. He was very charming and chivalrous as well. Obviously, we liked each other, so we went on many more dates. If there was one thing that my parents ingrained into me since a young age, it was to be wary of people. Only because when it came to money, people were never above trying to use you. For the longest time, I tried to dismiss what my parents were saying, but life taught me otherwise. So, even with Brett, I was cautious. We dated for about four years before I told him about my wealth. Brett was pretty indifferent towards it, which was what made me even more sure that he was going to be the one for me. He told me over and over again that my wealth wasn't something that was attractive to him, but it was who I was. Since I kept my wealth a secret from him for so long, I asked him to never let anyone else find out about it either, and he promised me he would. We got married with a pretty big ceremony. To be fair, most of the guests were far from my side, but regardless, Brett and I had the time of our lives. By the time we had gotten married, I had met Brett's mom, Kim, and his sister, Bree, a handful of times. They seemed pretty decent and not really problematic. They seemed a little awkward and sometimes I would catch them speaking to each other in hushed whispers while pointing at me and laughing. I ignored it all because it didn't bother me. As long as they weren't actively ruining my relationship with Brett or my life, they could say and do whatever they wanted. Brett was peeved by their behavior, so he was more than understanding when I told him I would keep my distance from them. 
About two weeks after we got married, Brett asked me if his mom and sister could stay with us for a while. Um, so my mom and sister called me today to ask if they could stay over at our place for a while. Oh, why? Turns out they were a couple of months behind rent and they're getting evicted. Oh no, that's horrible. Of course they can stay with us. But how long would they stay for? Mom said about four to five months. They need to work and save up for a new place. Mm, that's doable. But they will need to pick their load up around the house. If they live here, they have to contribute to chores and other things. Yes, of course. I'll make sure it happens. That decision turned out to be a horrible one. For some reason, Kim and Bree were under the impression that Brett owned our house. I did, by the way, not that that was an issue. I just had a lot more income than he did. Brett didn't say anything either because saying something would mean revealing my wealth. And who knew how much Kim and Bree would exploit me after that? They took one look at our place and assumed Brett was earning more money and decided to constantly belittle me. They never did their chores and instead left messes everywhere. No matter how many times Brett asked them to clean up after themselves, they never bothered because we're family, what's the big deal? Because I owned the resort, I had the free will to decide where I wanted to work from, so obviously I chose to work from home. For some reason, Kim didn't believe in working from home and Brie was just plain disrespectful. Both of them would constantly disrupt me while I was in the middle of sorting through important things. If I had a meeting to attend, they would purposely have me run errands for them right before. If I tried to put up a fight, they would use the excuse of not having money or transportation to do it. What made it even worse was that neither of them were employed, nor were they making any actual efforts to find a job. They happily lived at our place, eating our food, using our utilities. I wouldn't have minded it if they had at least taken responsibility for their messes. I was tired of Kim and Bree looking down on me. I could stand it for a while, but I mean, come on, I live with them and I have to hear their stupid comparisons all day long. All they see is that I'm a stay-at-home wife who sits on her computer and phone all day. They think their son is the one who works really hard and brings home the money. I do not appreciate my husband. But even he knows what the truth is. Brett was just as tired of them as I was. He hated how they made him feel inadequate, even though they weren't doing it intentionally. Most of all, he hated how they didn't value me enough and thought it was okay to just walk all over me that day. It all came to a head one day when I invited some of my friends over for brunch. I told Kim and Bree about my plans and politely asked them to stay away from the common areas for an hour or two because my friends would be over. And then after that, we would all be heading out. They had happily agreed to it. I thought it was weird that they agreed to it so readily, but I decided to be grateful for the lack of fight and just accept it. Well, I found it weird for good reason. It took half an hour of my friends being in the house for Kim and Bree to walk in and introduce themselves. At this point, I'm annoyed, but then it got worse. They started talking about how I was a spoiled brat who only knew how to live off of other people's money. My friends looked wildly uncomfortable, but since they were my close friends, they knew about the details of my relationship with my mother and sister-in-law. My friends sat in an uncomfortable and awkward silence while I was just fuming, listening to Kim and Bree laugh at my expense. I knew that if I gave them a reaction, they would eat it up, so I just got up and grabbed my things. I asked my friends if they wanted to head out, and everyone agreed in a heartbeat. We were out of the door so fast you would have thought the house was burning down, which at that moment, I really wished it did happen. After I came back, I went straight to my room. I didn't think I would have been able to see Kim or Bree until I had calmed down. I was still seething at what they had done. They were beyond disrespectful and I was done with them. I wanted them to see just whose money they were living on. I waited until Brett came home to discuss my plans with him. How's work? 
It was okay, pretty tired. How was your day? Did mom do something? Oh yeah, she did kind of cross the line though. Oh no, what did she do? Well, your mom and Bree agreed to remain in their rooms until my friends and I left, but surprise, surprise, they came downstairs. They then began to insult me and make fun of me. Your mom called me a spoiled brat. What the hell is wrong with them? I'm going to go and have a word with them. No, hold on. I have another plan in mind. I just wanted to know if it would be okay with you. I'm intrigued. Go on. How about we take them on a short little vacation to the beachside and we could stay at my resort? Oh my God, that's genius. That will put them in their place for sure. Right. Okay. But this is where my plan may get a little more evil. I think I'll be on board anyway. Go on. What if I don't allow them to stay in there? Like bring them out all the way there and just leave them. We can enjoy ourselves. We can come back and wait till they figure their way back home. Let's do it. They deserve it. Do you want to kick them out too? Honestly, yes. Great. We can do that too. I'm tired of them freeloading off of us. We'll get the eviction notice written up first and then go on our vacation. We can give it to them when we leave them stranded. Why was I even worried about whether you would approve of my plan? We decided to plan the vacation for next week because Brett would have been able to get off then. In that week, I ran by my lawyer and asked him to help me notarize my eviction notice. I was so excited to give it to Kim and Bree. I was finally going to be able to show them the consequences of their actions. Once I had my eviction notice and once Brett got his leave approved, we sat down and figured out our itinerary. We figured that making the vacation look extremely authentic would only make the revenge sweeter. We wanted Brett's mom and sister to feel absolutely torn. At the same time, we knew that this vacation was going to be a starting point for us. We were finally going to be able to live our lives the way we wanted to. I had called my brother to come over and change the locks on my door. I also asked him to bring some of his friends who I would obviously pay over and pack up all of Kim and Bree's stuff from their rooms. I would not allow Kim and Bree back into my life and they would know it. It would take us about half a day to drive over to the beach side. And in all that time, I would let them say and do whatever they wanted. After all, I would be the one who had the last laugh. When we had everything ready, we decided to tell Kim and Bree. So Daphne and I were thinking of going on vacation. Oh, to where? Just to the beach side. We were wondering if you guys wanted to join. Whoa, who are you to ask when it's my son's money you're spending? Mom, that's enough. The question was a simple yes or no one. Don't need to make a big fuss about it. Mom was right, Brett. You should be the one asking since you're the one spending the money. If you guys are going to keep this up, I'm going to take it as a no. Forgive us for thinking of you, but... We would be glad to join you guys on this vacation. Lord knows we need it after being cooped up in this house with Daphne. If you're going to be this way, I don't think I'd be comfortable with you coming along. Oh, please don't even try to have a say in this. My son has asked us to come along, so we will go. You just have to deal with it. I was irritated. I could see that Brett was too. The amount of entitlement those two carried around with them was actually astonishing. The only thing that allowed me to keep cool was the plan. I knew I'd have to hear a lot of insults and taunts, but I was ready for it. So we're set to go for our vacation that weekend. Kim and Bree were yapping our ears off, but every once in a while, Brett and I would shoot each other knowing looks. When we finally reached there, Kim and Bree looked at the resort with their mouths wide open. They began loudly discussing how beautiful the resort looked. They kept pausing Brett because they were proud that he could afford for them to go to such a luxurious resort. Brett kept his head down in embarrassment. 
Kim and Bree also didn't fail to make me feel inadequate. They kept telling me to be grateful that Brett invited me along because I was very undeserving of everything Brett did for me. I held my head up high as I walked through the doors into the resort. Kim and Bree walked behind me taunting me all along while Brett waited with the bellhop to unload our things. As soon as I got to the reception, the receptionist greeted me by referring to me as boss. Boss? Excuse me, but who are you referring to as boss? Oh, I was referring to Miss Daphne. You clearly can't tell the rich from the poor. If there's anyone you should be referring to as boss, it's us. I'm sorry, but Miss Daphne is quite literally my boss. What? Look, if this is some sick joke, I want to speak to your manager. The highest authority of this establishment just walked in with you, ma'am. I don't think there's much my manager can do for you. Both of their faces paled. They tried to argue about it further with the receptionist, but she continued to stand her ground about me being the owner of the resort. I just stood and watched them stutter and fumble their words as the realization of how they had been treating me started to kick in. I guess they started to put two and two together as they realized that all the time I spent on my phone and laptop was not actually lazing about, but me actually working and earning money. When Brett walked in, they immediately went to him and began to yell at him. How could you lie to us? What are you talking about? Don't try to act smart. How come you never told us that your wife was the owner of this resort and probably filthy rich? Why should I be the one to tell you about other people's business? It was not my place to say anything. You've embarrassed us. All this time, if we had known, what? You would have treated me nicer? No need to be rude about it. If you needed to know about my social status and earnings for you to treat me like a decent human being, then I don't want either of you to be a part of our lives. You don't get to decide for my son. Tell her, Brett. Actually, Mom, she has a point. Are you seriously taking her side over ours? I've told both of you time and again to stop being mean to Daphne, but not once have you listened. You only stopped doing it in front of me. That was beyond disrespectful. I don't want to have anything to do with either of you. Here is your eviction notice. When you return back, you'll find all of your things packed and out of the house. Don't bother trying to enter the house. I made sure to have all the locks changed. All the best on your journey back. You're leaving us just like that? You can't do that. We're family. If family actually meant something to you, you wouldn't have treated me this way. But we don't have any way to get back home. At least let us stay here. Well, here's a hundred dollars. Figure your way back home. Goodbye now. The look of pure shock on Kim and Bree's face was so satisfying. I couldn't believe I was finally going to be able to get rid of them. I finally don't have to constantly look over my shoulder in my own home. My home can finally become my safe space once again. Brett was in the same boat. He felt free too. I knew it because I could see how happy he was. He had a bounce in his step and he was super smiley and laughy. I loved seeing him that way. Our mini vacation went super well. We had a time of our lives and when it was time to go, we were actually excited to go back home for the first time in a while. It's been about six months since all of this happened and let me tell you, I'm never giving up my peace of mind for family. I mean it in the way that bullies in families are the worst and I will never help them out again. I'm just grateful my husband was on board with everything and had my back. I don't know much about what happened to Kim and Bree after everything. When we came back, all their stuff was gone, so I knew that they had managed to find a way to get back. Later, Brett had gotten calls from several family members about him abandoning his mother and sister after lying to and manipulating them. 
Brett obviously did not let his mom and sister's lies live. He provided proof and cleared our names. As far as I know, Kim and Bree have been cast out by the entire family, and none of them want to help them out. I'm glad Brett and I managed to get rid of the biggest source of toxicity in our lives. We are happier and livelier now, and I couldn't have life go any other way. Thanks for listening.